kind of interesting thing on rotation is there's rotation high, okay, that's through the bicep, bicep root, and, uh, and the thumb, okay, that's like high rotation, that's like rotation for all outside techniques, uh, all your top rolls, you know, you're going to pivot through your thumb, okay, that's kind of the perfect place to spin off, but inside rotation is different, right? Uh, so whatever, that'll be fine. Um, when you're when you're hooking, right? When you're hooking, uh, and you're and you're either pressing or any kind of deep hook where your bicep is not involved, because that's you know like we were covering earlier, your bicep is not involved in 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 most deeper style of hooks. Uh, there's still a rotation, but it's no longer through your thumb. It's through the bottom of your hand, right? This this twist downwards, right? There's rotation involved in that, right? A downwards twist, and it's tied together by your ability to sink, right? So, like uh, whatever. Here. You want to light me up there? <laughs> Just give me give me nothing. Good. Okay, so like when I'm doing rotation, right? So much of it, this is like kind of your minimum. If you can't do this, you shouldn't be working it with it really with rotation, but so from here, you're going to twist inwards, okay, so you're in a hook, mm -hmm. and then you're going to twist down, okay, all right, because right? when, you're, when you're in the hook, right, once we settle in, you know, so much of the hook is this downwards twist, right, mm -hmm. yeah. right, and that, that's rotation, but it's a low rotation, yeah, I mean, I love to train rotation, rotation and cup, they're they're huge. They're huge strengths. Uh, but I, I go through periods, you know, like uh, I'll get focused in on a piece and I'll work it and work it and work it and I'll get great gains, I'll get good results uh, and then there'll come a point when I'll have done too much mm -hmm. and my gains will diminish and I might even start to get like, you know, I don't want to say Andrew, but I, I'll have done a bit too much, you know, so then I'll switch, switch around. Uh, and I generally cycle between you know the big ones. You know you can never go wrong with working your cup, rotation, rise, and then after that, you know those are the big three. Those are the ones that are all like, they're like that right there is 85 percent arm wrestling. You know then I'll start to do things like my sink, okay, mm -hmm. or just that press piece, okay. I'll work that a lot. That's that's a good one. My supination piece, okay. Work a lot of supination. Um, Reverse just to bring bring balance to the forearm. Yeah. So many injuries in arm wrestling happen just because uh, we do too much of the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the body's designed to do everything, and when you love only one thing, you know, your body gets all out of balance, right? Yeah. Like your body needs balance, right? You get too tight, you get too spiraled inwards. Everything's internal, twisting mm -hmm. in, cupping in, you know. Yeah. But you, and you're you a lot stronger this way than you are. Of course you are. Yeah, and you always will be. Yeah. But it's important to bring it back that way just so this can function better, yeah. you know? So, yeah, so working balance is a part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about, uh, talk a little bit about injuries, okay? And there's a lot of different ideas about injuries and, and arm wrestling. Uh, you're going to get injuries wherever it is. It's just, it's part of any sport. Any sport you do to a high level, you're going to get injuries, tendonitis, whatever, that's a common one. And when I say injuries, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about breaking your arm or, you know, something that requires surgery, you know, I'm not talking about where you actually, you know, ruptured your tendon or blew a tendon off a bone or like, you know, blew a ligament completely. I'm talking about, you know, basically being something past sore, you know, something that takes like, you know, five or six weeks. Like, you know, I hurt myself in a match. There's nothing obvious, nothing yeah, went purple, you know, uh, nothing is like visibly torn or broken, but it's something bad happened, you know? And for me, for me, that doesn't keep me off the table. That does not keep me outside of the gym. A lot of people will say, oh, I've got this, I've got this injury and I just want to let it heal. To me, is the worst thing you can do. Um, to me, what I think is you never want to stop getting into the gym. You never want to stop going to the club and training. Uh, reasons why, okay. The big reason for why you don't want to stop going to the club is you will become a better arm wrestler training through injury. The, the big thing is, is you need to let your guys know that you're injured, 
okay? The best, I mean, the club, you have to have a great club environment. You need to have dudes who you can talk to and you say, hey man, I'm hurt real bad in this spot. I'll show you exactly where I'm hurt. You gotta take care of me. And hopefully your guys are cool enough that they will do that. Um, and, and what it's gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to diversify. Um, I believe you become a great arm wrestler through injury. Um, in 1998, I was a relatively new arm wrestler. I was an arm wrestler who had really just found that really, really strong spot known as the press. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'd been arm wrestling competitively for, you know, about four years, five years, and uh, if the match stopped, I knew if I turned like this, there was a whole lot of pressure coming. And uh, I'd been thinking about this guy, Earl Wilson. He's a great Canadian arm wrestler. I was thinking about him, thinking about it. I'm going to beat this guy. I'm beat this guy to my few classic. And, uh, and I did beat him. Uh, we, we hit in. I, I planned the match. I, I'd, I'd arm wrestled him a thousand times in my mind before I had stepped up to the table that day. And I hit out. And I came inside. And I committed. And I buried him. I buried his arm. But... Earl Wilson is a gorilla, and in the process of me burying his arm, he seriously stretched out some stuff in there. Like, like I was done for the rest of the tournament, basically. I got my win, and nothing. there was no sound, and nothing broke, but something got stretched to a point where if I took my finger and touched here, it was ridiculous pain. Like, it was not happening. Like, there was no supination ability there was no side pressure in my game nothing because when I hit my press right instead of being here and being all in line I was probably about here and I just forced that thing in there you know <laughs> it was great but you know in that process I got an injury so what I did was I just kept on training I kept on pulling and what I did was for a year and a half I toppled and I only top. And at that point, I really didn't know how to top roll very well. Um, outside pulling, because that's all I could do. That's all I was able to do. And if I had not received that injury, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have top rolled for several years after that. Anyways, the injury came back. You know, a year and a half later, my hook came back, and my side pressure was great, and there was no issues. But over the course of that period, I've added a huge, you know, balance piece to my game. And every time I've gotten injured. Um, I've still arm wrestled. After my surgery, uh, I was on the table, you know, I think it was three days after, this, actually it was the next day, um, I was on the table arm wrestling. But I told my guys, I'm like, listen, like, you can't, you can't do anything to me. Like, I just had surgery, like, all I want you to do is just touch my hand. And I'm like, it's all I can do right now. That's all I can do, just hold hands with me. <laughs> and, you know? But I knew that doing nothing was not the right choice, you know? You know, golden rule of arm wrestling, don't ever stop. Don't stop and don't get injured. <laughs> Those two things. I've failed, but, you know, I'm keeping on working at it. So, you know, and through that process, they were cool with me. Nobody hurt me anymore, and they let me kind of slowly work back into it. If I had just said I'll be back in three or four weeks, you know, or two months or three months or whatever, you know, all that stuff that I in between there wouldn't have happened. Uh, there's always something you can do. Uh, anyways, that's kind of how I feel about injuries and pulling. <laughs>